Hi there, welcome back. So let's move to tutorial two, okay, of this first model. So, <clears throat> so this tutorial is a little bit more complicated than the previous one, okay? The previous one was a long one, okay? Despite it is a very easy case. In this one, we, we are going to try to do since shorts, but remember that we're going to use exactly the same steps as previous, the dictionaries, okay? The only difference is that here we have new applications, okay? So the physics involved here, this is a multi-phase ca case where we have free, free surface. So imagine they have a water column here and then, well, you know what is happening, it will move and this obstacle here, there will be some interaction, okay? So it appears to be a very complex physics, but you will see that setting this case is, is relatively easy. Uh, one thing that this is another validation case that the previous one you have some references here and what we're going to do is this this is our workflow so we're going to generate the mesh using these tools i'm not going into details what is happening here because there is a dedicated model for meshing okay but these tools here are related to uh, mesh generation okay so here we're going to assign the name of the patch and everything set fields this is to initialize the solution so remember that here what we have in this specific region volume we have water so somehow we need to tell the sol the solver how to initialize in a region you know a given value of water or velocity or pressure or whatever so this is what it's used for remember you can use phone info and see what is going on we are going to use another solver in interphone this is a solver for multi-phase flows and i want to stress something this is not incompressible solver so we don't have we are not computing that the pressure divided density this is the actual pressure in pascal units we are going to see that when we define boundary conditions and then post-processing and the classical monitors or function objects as they are calling in open font so this is what going to happen we're going to use a, by the way a quartz mesh okay so this so it will be it will run fast fast probably 20 minutes half an hour as you use a finer mesh you need, you need more resources or more time but we're going to get something like this so initial conditions and then you have all the transient and see that the water hits the also here and you have all the interaction okay and i want to show you something here so this is the solution computing using a fine mesh okay so see that we have all the free surface interaction okay the time here and what is nice is that we have a, a movie of an actual experiments and we can compare second by second or millisecond by millisecond so see that we have a very good behavior even we have a sampling see here that we're sampling in some locations in the article and we have the the pressure history in those locations so as you see we have a very good agreement want to remind you that this mesh is finer much finer than the one we're going to run but still we're going to get some some results that follow similar trends okay so we have this case located here so 3d dam break and let's move there so let's address a little bit some things that we're going to see so we're going to use this new solver this new solver takes new input files so previously we have very simple but a few simple uh, input files now we have more input files okay different physics we have new models so see that the new files that we're going to see in the directory constant is g transfer properties and momentum transport g is for gravity very important in multi-phase momentum transport is the turbulence model and transfer properties similar to the previous case but we need to define the properties for two phases okay so let's see what happens here in g simple as this okay so always pay attention to the header so we have the right header but remember if you copy and paste be careful with the class type okay this might be might give you some problems if you are using a different file okay look at dimensions okay so gravity acceleration meter second square and the value okay so you need to when you generate the, the measure your domain you need to know your reference system so in our case our reference system the gravity is defined in the minus set direction okay then for transport properties so see how it's defined here so we have now this new keyword faces okay so this is a keyword open phone and then here you give the names of the faces this is user given okay open phone does not have a database so i give a name here water and air but you can call it i don't know chocolate and and banana or honey okay it's up to you so you give it the name water 
Okay, so the first one will be the primary phase. Okay, usually it's the one with the heaviest density, but it doesn't matter the order, by the way, but this is a standard practice. So define here water and air, water, and then give the, pro the properties, Tran transport, mo model, uh, transport model, new, okay, and draw density. Look at the units and air properties and sigma is the surface tension, okay, with, with the units. So see the units and you give the value 0 0.07, okay? So here we define it also, this is one you, you put zero and you disable a model. This is a, a model, okay? This is the interaction between water and air at the surface. So in this case, we can say that it's negligible, the influence, but this is one you can disable or enable, but it's not a big deal here, okay? We'll address with more details that in, when we go advanced physics briefly, we're going to talk about that then we have momentum transport here with uh, we select the turbulence model so see that this is the definition of the dictionary remember that always you have the header i'm not showing the header here later we open the file and see that simulation type ras and then you have a sub dictionary and you choose this method there are many methods available in open fund so remember you can use the banana method misspell something here or put banana and we'll give you a list of all methods available or options available. So as you go into the zero directory, you're going to find this file. So remember that here you give initial boundary conditions for all the variables that you are solving. In this case, what we're solving, alpha water is volume fractions, okay? will represent it is a marker that is telling you where do you have water or where do you have air, okay? So you have no, no dimensions, it's concentration, let's say. Then this is pressure minus electrostatic component, okay? In this case, for it interphone, it's called like this. In any case, if you identify this variable, open phone will complain, I will let you know. Velocity and these are related to turbulence models. So we're using K accident and then the turbulent viscosity. Then when it runs, it, the solver might add new variables. For instance, you will find P, which will be the total pressure or the pressure plus the hydrostatic component. So this is uh, the definition. So see that alpha water is dimensionless and then you give this value. So zero gradient is just extrapolate the value, take the value to the next cell center at the top. This is a new definition. So remember, fun info, and you can see what is happening there. But this is kind of equivalent to a zero gradient. It will let the flow go out, but if the flow is coming back, it will block it. Okay, so that is what, what it's doing. Then we have for pressure, look at the units. Okay, so this is now actual Pascals. We have also this new boundary condition, fixed flux pressure. So this is equivalent to a zero gradient, okay? So this is why open from tends to be a little bit more, a little bit confusing when it comes to boundary conditions. People always wonder, okay, what is this? But this is a zero gradient and it has a correction for this kind of problems, okay? When you deal with, with interphone or multi-phase flows, okay? There is a small correction, but it's a zero gradient, okay? Then we go, these are constrained left, right, there, there are constrained later, we open the, the files, and in top is a total pressure, okay? Just total pressure, what I say? We define total pressure and that's all. These entries are a standard for, for this boundary condition. You just read fun, fun info and it will get, it tell you how to use it. But also here, you can, instead of this one, you can fix the pressure. So you can use fixed value and fix the pressure. But it, it is kind of also a standard practice to use this. You can test it, okay? You can do your own benchmarking. We go to velocity, very standard. So see that fixed value, okay? Zero, zero, zero. So everything zero. We have this in the top. So this one, and this is here, is using combination with total pressure. So if you use total pressure, you put this one like this. If you put fixed value and fix the pressure value, it might be a good idea to put here zero gradient, okay? And then for K, so here I'm not going to say from, because here we have a values definition. So see also that we're using, we're using this, let's say syntax to put all these boundary surfaces or patches, okay, in one single line, okay. In the previous slides, now the previous tutorial, you have an explanation of how to do this one. So you can have different sub dictionaries that this color or blocks or you can just put it together like this so you will save some time so all of these like this and this is remember here you are just declare this variable and use the same here so initial conditions and you put it here so this value 
must be computed, but this is something that we'll, we will address in Trovence modeling because there are some some correlations how to compute it. Okay, this doesn't come from thin air. Like I took it and I say I will put one thousand now. There is some logic behind. Okay, and now we move to system. Okay, so we have the classical compulsory control the SV skin SV solution. So I will skip here because later we, we will open. But see that again, a standard definition. Okay, so there are, there are these new entries. We're going to talk about these new entries because ICOFEN doesn't have these entries. Okay, so another limitation for ICOFEN. But here we have it. Then we define function objects. So this is the function objects or monitors that I'm using to compute minimum and maximum values. I'm not using the packet one like we used in the previous one. We'll see later. So this is a new function object. See that we're computing an integral. Okay, so the integral of this of water in the domain. Then we're sampling C pressure at these locations and we can compare with the actual data and then computing this quantity called y plus related to turbulence model like modeling later we're going to see that when we see advanced models uh sb skin all the numerics okay sb solution how we solve the linear system we're crunching numbers very standard okay so these are entries are related to the solver now we have a different uh, let's say we loop in a different way or we have new options. So previously we didn't have this option. Now we have this option. So this will give more stability. Okay. So see that different solvers might have different actions. And then you will find these optional dictionaries in system. So the compose part is to run in parallel. I'm not going to talk about that. Okay. Then we have another model for that to explain, but running in parallel, you use the processors that you have in your computer, supercomputer, whatever. Okay. So it will be faster. So here you basically, you are telling I have four cores you for, for use four cores set field is to initialize so remember that you have this region you need to initialize okay so this set fields reads like this so remember here you have a header why not showing showing that so just default value so you say that see that alpha is an scalar so see that you're using this class the name of the variable is always called alpha dot and water is your primary phase so if you go back to transport more uh, properties you will see that the primary phase you put it here dot water so zero means no water and then here you create a regions box to sell okay this is the name and you are using this this kind of initialization which is a box so you give from absolute minimum to absolute maximum okay it's very important from minimum to maximum Okay, since you put it in the other way, it's not going to give you a right initialization. There are, by the way, there are many options available, so just misspell here and you are going to see all the options available. I'm going to show you that. And then here, you say inside this region, put water. And that's all. The decomposed part dictionary reads as, as this. There is a header, not showing, just number of six domains. I'm going to run with four processors. By the way, if you have less processors, I, I adjust it here and put two, whatever. So four percent, or if you have more, put more. It's up to you. And this is the method to use to do the decomposition. There are different methods. Go ahead and always use this one, okay? But we are going to talk a little bit more about this in the in the in the model for parallel computing. So to generate the mesh, these are the steps, and we're going to use this as a tool that comes with OpenFun, a Snappy X mesh. So this is to to generate meshes for more complicated geometry so this is a little bit more complicated so using block mesh is a little it's very tricky to do it can be done but it's very tricky so it's easier to use a snappy head mesh i'm not going into details so you see that you have all the steps and then but we run the simulation remember your log files always use log files okay so there will be some post-processing using new plot and see that using this this mesh these are resolved with this mesh so see that we get relatively good results so we have numerical simulation and experiments and the water integral so see that does not conserve this doesn't mean that it's wrong but might be something related to the accuracy or probably something is going out of the domain as you might expect now as you, you see the video you will see that is water going out of the top and that's also also the post-processing i will show you something new because we want to capture this interface so there is specific step to capture that okay and um, finally remember you have this exercise of try to do it okay and we can discuss this during the q a sessions so let's go and run the, this case 
So I am already here. So just to remind you that whatever you, you extracted these tutorials, 101 OF, 3D dam break. You have the 2D version also. Okay, so it's much faster, but let's run the 3D. So see that our traditional directory structure. So we have zero, constant, and system. Then the others are optional. And then these are the automatic scripts. So I'm going to choose to run this one. It's going to run mesh solver and then it's going to do some sample don't pay attention to this file this is something personal note for me that i need to add something or fix something but the case is running fine uh here you have the experimental results and you have some information there okay the data can be downloaded and this is for the post-processing what i want to point out here is look at this zero and zero org why do we have this so remember, you go into zero, you have your initial conditions, okay, for, um, boundary condition for your variables. Okay, so actually here I already initialized, so this is nice that I have it like this, okay. So see that when you initialize the fields using set fields, see this is your original one. You don't have any information here or here, but when you initialize, you are overwriting that field. So now you have some information. As it is in ASCII, you can read it, okay? But if it were in binary, you cannot read these numbers, but you still can read these names, okay? But see that this is when you initialize, you are overwriting. So you can get an idea why I have ORG. Original files, and this is the one that, that you initialize. If you want to go back to that initial state, you know that here you have your backup. So when you see zero underscore ORG is that I have a backup there because I'm doing some initialization or something that I am overwriting the information that you have here. So here you have to, your starting point. That's all. Okay, so let's run this case. And first step will be let's generate the mesh. Okay, so as you open here, see the steps for the mesh. Okay, so this is just meshing. And this step here, this particular one, it is related to the initialization. Okay, so let's do something. Instead of running this automatic script, let's run these steps so see that you can copy there and then you can paste here and it will start to do the mesh okay so let's wait and in testing that this okay and then send and it is going to do the mesh so this tool is snappy x mesh which is a measure and just to remind you you can go for one info and you go a snappy hex mesh this will give you okay you need to load open phone at least in my case see that it's giving you the information location and for instance the boundary condition that was inlet outlet okay you have it there and see that it will give you information how to use it okay so actually let, let's go and let's open some other uh, 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 boundary condition for pressure now it was this this one fixed flux pressure okay and i think it's a good practice now get familiar with this funny info tool because it's much easier than reading the source code okay so i see that here is telling you everything okay description sets the pressure gradient okay so, so i say it's a zero gradient to a value such as okay blah, 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 blah. so with some correction okay this is how you use it okay and then here you have some tutorials but also it will tell you the location where you have it okay so as you go here you're going to find and actually this is the location where where you have all the boundary conditions and just to show you that you go there and see that these are all the boundary conditions that you have in open phone okay so you see it's very useful this phone info Tool. So here the meshing is done. Okay, we have a mesh, and before no, so you can do also check mesh. So see that I'm saving all my log files as well. So see that it's telling that this mesh is okay. See that you have all these patches, so you know that you are going to have a file here pro boundary. And you have those names there okay so later we might need to change these names if you don't like it or this type here okay so what i wanted to show you here that if i go like this paraphone 
So now this is a fully 3D case, by the way. So see that fully 3D case and see that you have the, this arc circle here. Okay, so you can create now a cog plane. See that I will create like this and you have it there. Okay, uh, this is nothing. Okay, this is just visualization though. So many times we are going to see that, that line there. So that is just visualization. It's the projection of the nodes in this cog plane. So just to convince you. So let me go disable the triangulation. As you go like this, see that is this projection. Okay. So don't worry about that. So as you go here, see that you access the variables and see that everything is zero. So we need to initialize the solution. So to initialize the solution, we use that tool set fields. Okay. So these are the steps. So see, see here that I'm erasing the folder zero and copy the original. So you always have the backup and then you initialize here. These commands here, again, you can go for one info create patch. And it's going to tell you, okay, what does it do? Okay. So basically they are used for renaming, to rename the, the name of the patches. Okay. So let, let's run these steps. Okay, now notice that I initialize the solution, okay, with set field. So it's this one. And see that it's giving you this output, okay? It's telling you that, okay, everything worked. It. And if I launch again Paraphon, and I will go right ahead here, see that now here we have water. Zero air, one water. That is the. <clears throat> that is the idea now of using uh, set fields. Okay, so now that we have the, this, we are ready to go. So how do you know the interface between water and air? So to compute that one, see here that you have this filter contour. Use that one. So it's alpha water, the quantity that you want. You can uh, apply contour just in scalar and scalars. Okay, so you have a vector unique to the composite. So you access alpha water. It's a quantity that is bounded between 0 and 1. So if you put 0 0.5, would be the interface you have it here. Apply, and there you go. Okay, so that is the other filter that is very useful. You can use this, or you can use the other one here, threshold. Threshold, that one, the, the contour, it is a surface. Threshold will get the cell sent, the cells, the volume. Okay, again, you go like this, apply, and you want only everything between 0 and 0, 05. Okay, it's the opposite. Okay, like this, and see that it's getting the volume. Okay. So we have that, and now we're ready to run. Okay. So to run, we have the other script, run solver. So see that now we're going to run in parallel. So to run in parallel, you need to use this tool decompose part that is going to decompose according to the number of processors that you have available that you define in this file decompose part so see here that you have four so according to what you have in your computers put it here okay so you have two put two so you have one you need to run in serial you don't do this okay you need to run in serial so I have four, I leave it like that. In solver, see that here that this is how you run in parallel. MPI run minus MP, number of processors, four. Okay, so if you are using four, put four. If you are using two, put here two and two here. If you are running in serial, don't use these options, okay? You don't use these options in serial, okay? Be careful. And also this minus parallel, okay? Erase that, okay? So be careful of that. But let's run in serial, okay? So we're ready to go. And I will launch here, okay? So I will redo everything again. I will run, use run. No, no let me go run solver. No, we have everything. It's the composing and see that now it's running. As for the previous case, so I see that you have here the minimum and maximum values, okay? All those function objects, computing the integral concentration. See that you have your loop here, your CFL number. You have all the information here that you can monitor the solution. You also have the log file. So also you can use 
Python plot washer. And you can monitor your solution if you want. Okay, so see that you have everything there. So, and see that this can be very misleading because in the previous one, they were going down very fast. See here that it's a little bit more <laughs> strange, but the fact that it's not going down in a mono, monotonic way doesn't mean that the solution is there. Yeah? It's just an indication of on a steadiness like the one we have in this case. We have the water column moving, you no, know, moving very fast and on, undergoing you know, some deformation uh, and some dynamics. So, okay. So while it's running, let's finish you now reviewing all the dictionaries. So this one is all your initial conditions and boundary conditions. Okay. So let me open all of them and see that nothing to say here. So remember zero gradient, just fun info and you will see what is happening in the outlet so i show you that but just to revisit that one again open a new tab with nine phone info and inlet outlet and see that i will show it one and here you have the information and how it's used okay so see that this one, this boundary condition provides a generic outflow condition with a specific inflow for the case of return flow. Okay, very clear explanation. So one thing that maybe this is also used in commercial software, you need to, to do this selection because in commercial software, usually this is done automatically. So if you have used commercial software, probably you never deal with this, or probably sometimes you have a, a selection or a checkbox and you select it but it's done usually it's done automatically open for you need to do things uh, manually so okay it's running and so on will be for all boundary conditions will be the same so alpha epsilon so see that we're using this syntax here but k see the units okay so fully dimensional pay attention to the header and everything pressure okay so fixed flux pressure and you okay now if we go let's go see that it, as we're running in parallel now you don't have the time folders here so see that what it's doing is decomposing everything in different folders so see processor zero one two and four so using two you will have processor zero and one and the solution you have it here so then you need to put everything together okay so i'm not going into details but when we address now that model for parallel probably you understand better but see that inside each folder you you have the solution okay but it's decomposed into processors uh so if i go into constant see that we have these files that are compulsory this is optional um, i'm not going to open it we for the moment we're not interested in that So see that we have gravity vector, okay? You know your reference system, refine it, and you need to define it. And there, momentum transport for turbulence model, okay? So we're defining this one. There are many models available, okay? So misspell there, and you will see all the actions, okay? Then I go here, transport properties, and see that you give the name, water primary phase, and that primary phase is important because when you define your boundary conditions, alpha dot water, the one that you put here, the first one. So you put here air, when you define here, it will be dot air. So be careful with that. Give your properties and that's all. Then we move to system and the compulsory ones control did as we skin as we solution the rest is related to meshing okay so here remember that we were renaming the patches so just to show you that you see that renaming you're going to see that here in polymesh in boundary you're going to see the name so this is how i recommend you to proceed look at this file look at the names that you have in this file and then use those names in, in the boundary conditions, okay? So you need to have the same names, okay? So if this one is called left here, it must be called left in C in the folder zero. So see that you have these names, you rename, and see that also when I use those utilities, I change this one. The top, it is a patch. So everything is wall, is this box, everything is wall, but the top is open. So as it is open, 
I need to use a patch there where I'm going to define this zero grid in an outlet. So that's all, okay? And, okay, so let me close Python. See, Python here is adding some overhead, so it was kind of slowing down what I was doing. Okay, so we go here and we open all this. So SV skin is discretization of each term appearing in your governing equations, okay? So we know that we have this navier stokes equation, as you, you recall those equations, you have many terms, okay? So that's what it's doing, you're doing here. So you have a time derivative, you're using this method. If you want to know the methods, use the banana method, misspell here, put a banana there, and it's going to give you all the options. Or probably with full and info, let's say, let's see. Full and info, I think it's not going to work. Okay, OF9. And let's see if it works, if it gives. So see that it's searching in the source code and maybe if it finds something, it's going to to let you know. I actually see that here and see that it found something. So see that this Euler appears here in ODE, but we're interested here. So this is, and I'm interested in two. I know that this is the actual, so if you go into this directory, see that here you have all the discretization and see that it's telling what it is, okay? So very neat, this, this fun info. So now it saves you a lot of, a lot of time. Now you need to go and, and search into the source code or use fine and great commands. So get used to use that, that, that tool. So this is what you're doing. Did it is skin, gradient, so see that default and then for this specific one you use a different method so later in the numerics we're going to see what what is going on there then for the divergence so see that this is diff these terms are different from the one in icofon because these are different equations so you, you will see these new terms here but the idea is the same okay so if you run and you don't put something here, open form will complain it will let you know i will show you that okay so each term appearing you need to discretize. Then you go into SB solution. So let me wait here that. So here's where you crunch number. So see that you define here. So very standard. As I say, the, here I put, there are different methods now to, to solve the linear system. So here I put three of those methods. Again, Mrs. Pell Sunset will give you the options, but there is no actually best method now that it will work for all cases okay it's very problem dependent but i think that this for this case this is the best one okay so all variables that you have and this is the the options related to the to the pressure velocity coupling that we're using to resolve the the equations okay so these are standard options i recommend you to to use these options okay one three one so these are the loops the number of iterations that, that you are doing so see that in this case you are doing Okay, so let me, uh, it's a little bit slow here. Okay. Okay, let me close this window. So see that we're doing three correctors. One, two, and three. Okay, you, you see the three cor correctors there and one non-orthogonal corrector in pressure. So probably let me go where we see that better. So see three corrector for pressure. So pressure with one non-orthogonal corrector, this one. Corrector two and three. So see that we can change this on the fly. So let me put here 10 non-orthogonal correctors and see that you have it here. 10 non-orthogonal correctors. So these are related to mesh quality. So when you have bad meshes, you increase it. So here I exaggerated a little bit, but usually back meshes probably put three, but one in this case is a perfect mesh. It's fine. So see that you have that. So when you do those iterations, what you're doing is computing better approximations. So if I increase this one now to 10, you will see the difference. So see that now you have the 10 outer loops. So 
my advice always independently of the physics that you are doing always do at least one non-orthogonal corrector and this depending then later we, we are going to give you more guidelines but i would say that this one doing three is okay it is not very expensive it has a cost you see but it's not very expensive okay so see that now okay so it's a little bit slow let's say let's wait a little bit from time to time it's frozen okay i don't know why okay so see that you have it there and then you have the other this is the most powerful one okay and this is the one that it will give you more stability more accuracy but automatically it's going to slow down everything why because it's going to repeat these loops the number of times that you say here so let me put here three and see what is happening here pin penetration one two and three so it's repeating everything three three times so it's giving you very computation of all variables It's much more stable so these are the options when you have very severe physics like shock wave this is the value that you increase okay however it has a cost again this case they are solving these easy cases so we can get our way around using just one of these outer uh, outer correctors okay so let's go back just to one outer corrector also you see here that we can modify these variables on the fly okay so let me wait a little bit okay and let me go back to one but my advice in reality will be like this and actually this is the how i configure my my, my pressure velocity co coupling two three one always even in bad quality measures this is good so if you have very severe physics you increase this probably to five or 10 is up to you but let's go back here to 131 this one is related also not to the stability of the solver so usually these values are okay for on a steady problem so this is on a steady problem by the way or on a steady solver solver that i use it and that's all okay and then in control d the final one okay and just to comment this so we have okay so it's here it's frozen from okay, from time to time. I don't know why. Okay, let me wait a little bit. Okay, we have it here. So see that we have control D standard auctions, okay? But you have these new auctions, okay? So this one is can be very very useful. Not always, okay, but it can be. So basically see that here you are just using adjustable time step which is related to this okay so yes means that now it's adjustable as you put it to no it's fixed to this value but adjustable and now you will go in or open from the solver is going to adjust the time step to reach this maximum current number okay so as you say here here 10 well, let me show you well 10 is very large in this case now but see that is a change it to five the time step automatically will be scaled or DSKL now to get that that current number. So see here that you have current number. So in this solver interphone that you have the free surface by the way, you have two current numbers. One related to the to the flow field and the other related to the let's say to the interface. Okay. In this case for this solver. For single phase solver you have only one current number. Still you can use this max current okay so you are not going to use this but icophone doesn't have this option okay so it will be pimple phone if you want to have that option so it works in the similar way you fix your current there okay so it's up to you but let's work with a current of one and see that here you have all the functionalities i want to point out something here this one so this is the minimum maximum values how it was defined and let me add the note here in open phone eight okay now they change it Honestly, I don't know. I, I don't like the new way to define it. I prefer this way. So if you're using open for eight, you should use this one. If you are in open for nine, this is the way how it's done. By the way, here I'm using the expanded form. I'm not using the packet one like in the previous one that it was one single line. I don't like that because it's hidden many options. Now, so see here that you have many options. So also it, it helps you to understand better about what is going on. So I prefer to use it like this and 
you will see now continuously that always I will use like this instead of the of the packet one. Okay, but you can also use the, the packet one if you want. Okay, it's doing the, the same stuff. But see that you define it like this, compute it every time step, compute a scalar, so see min max domain of scalars. Okay, then compute the same for vectors. See operation there and and saying okay, let me go back. Okay, operation at the beginning and saying none is doing nothing, and then here and just compute the minimum of the scalar, minimum of a vector, maximum. Okay, so basically you declare here and see that you use this one to use it, and then you want overwrite, you want to overwrite the operation. Okay, so the the packet uh, function object is something similar. You have the definition somewhere, and you just call it here. And then you you just modify it like this, okay? So if you want to modify right control, you add it below, okay? But as I say, I prefer to have my definitions here. It's just a personal preference. You have this one, then you have this for water in domain, okay? This is integral, so see that the type, the library, enable. Later we have a chapter dedicated to this, so I'm not going into details. And then volume integral of what alpha domain where do you want it in the whole domain probes okay so in these locations compute p and p underscore rgh do it every single time so. and compute this y plus value okay so this is something that i can visualize related to the turbulence model so this is it okay the case so it is running let's see at what point okay it's done wow it was rather fast okay so remember we generate the mesh we assign names to the patches and so on you assign your boundary conditions here we have zero org that is the backup but here's the initialization okay then while it's running those function actors see this post-processing folder it was created after it start running so here the function is okay and let me go and open again this control d like close it so see that here you are call it pros one as you go in post processing see that pros one and here you are going to have the information of this function object okay so zero folder because you start to sampling from zero if you start to sample from 10 you will find 10 there or if you start to do another sampling from eight you're going to see here eight and inside you have the information for p and if you open this see that you have the file for, for for each pro location and you have the value here and the time okay so functions so there are two types of function objects Sounds that it will compute a field like the y plus that is saving you no know, the y plus or something that is getting this this quantitative data okay you're, you're measuring that so what in domain see that you open this one you are going to have the volume integral okay so in time and the volume integral and then you can post process that using new plot or python or whatever you you like to use y plus see that it would save the minimum and maximum while running but also saving a field that you can visualize so by patch so every single patch that is a wall in the file constant polymesh boundary that is a wall where you can compute y plus you have it here minimum maximum average value and the same will be with this one that we, i created for the minimum and maximum so min domains you open this one you're going to have the minimum value for the variables and also the location okay also you can disable for instance for me it's not necessary to save this so you can disable this information because sometimes this can take space Okay, so in the function argument definition, you, you have the auction, but don't worry. You can also advance to chapter five, if I will recall, post-processing, and you see, you will see there how, how you save those log files. But it will be, let me go here, uh, will be this one, right fields, right through, uh, da -da -da. It, this one will be, yeah, enable, I think, this one will disable writing that one into the file but it will show you on the screen okay so feel free to play with those actions so now let's do the post process okay so remember that we have everything in parallel okay so this is another 
new thing for you. So Parafone does not access the information in parallel. To do that, you need to use this option, Parafone minus built in. So when you use this option, now you are going to be able to access the information in parallel. Okay. By the way, I recommend you always to use the built-in option because it's faster. Even if you have a case in Syria, this option works. Okay. So that is another advice. So I will launch here. And important. See here that case type. Reconstructed means in serial. Decomposed in parallel. This is parallel. I choose this one. Apply. And that's all. You have your solution here. I want to visualize there. And if I press play, now you have there. So let's go and let's compute this one. I want alpha and it's 0 0.5. Okay. And you have it there. Then the obstacle. And see that there is water going out of the domain actually. Okay, so as you see the movie, you will see the also in the experiment that is water. So that's why the integral is not conserving, but also when everything floating out, you are losing some information. It's just due to the mesh resolution. Finer mesh will give you better results. But let's say something that I want to visualize also the walls, the obstacle. How do we do that? So to do that, we use some filters. So let me introduce another filter. So the first thing is that you need to select everything here. By the way, what I'm showing you of the filter works using Parafone or Parafone with the auction built in. Okay. You select everything there. You go into filters and here there is an, a filter called extract block. Select and then you are going to extract the information that you want. So we want internal field. So here I'm going to apply one filter, but now I'm going to use another extract block. And here I want to have that obstacle and probably let me throw in another block. So I already have it here in recent and let me get, I don't know, uh, button, the button. Okay. So see that you have it there. This is internal here. We apply this filter. Okay. To extract the surface. Okay, let me change colors. I don't like that color in my mind. Water is blue, even if this. So let me go here, change the color, put it here. Remember, enable this option. Sometimes there are some stuff hidden there. So, and let me go ground. I want the ground solid color. That is okay. And the obstacle color that using this static pressure. Okay. And then here, let me put a cock plane. So this is the internal mesh and you can apply filters there. I will put the cock plane here, here, okay. See that set is the gravity, so negative. So be careful with that. And see that alpha water, if you put alpha water, it's telling you now the concentration there. Okay, so, but you can put also there P, hydrostatic component, and a static. Okay, so let me go like this. Probably we see better. You have the, we see hydrostatic component, and this is a static pressure that you will see here. In. Okay, so this is it, and let me throw in another filter alphabetical annotate time filter so it will access the time and you have the time there so you have options here and if you press play off you go and see that water and see that water is going out actually oh and out here so that's why the integral is not conserving and you have all the interactions. So the, the feel that you see in the, the slides is, is much nicer because it's a much finer mesh. This mesh is, is rather very, very quartz mesh. The one that I, I used for that one, I think it was something about 6 million cells. Okay, it, it was not a lot cells, it means not a lot, but it's much more, more than we are, what we are using here, okay? 
and see that you have this wave there then coming here the interaction okay and um, very nice result okay so let me stop here let me go here and for instance new plot let me use new plot to plot the information that are also we, we, we have available so okay actually see that we have a sampling here to do some sampling so let's run this sample i see here that is running the new plot script ah okay now it, it is like this okay sure. so in the directory new plot you have that script and see that is plotting the information okay and not going to into details of our new plot also you have i think you have it there in this slides as short explanation but in the internet you you can find you now how to use this it's relatively relatively easy so see that you open these scripts these are the steps it's like the the automatic scripts that we're using for open phone is something similar here okay so see that very straightforward and it's accessing the information that you know that always see that you are going to have that data there okay the name you you give the name so you access that data so we compare see that with the experiment okay so so if you want more information here in the in the case i think here you're going to have the link and uh bu 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 bu. but look for this aesthetic test case and or probably in the red may i think uh, i put it so the link to the aesthetic okay i didn't put it uh i will update also the link to show that the read me file to show that but see that this is the plotting now in one location okay the pro and then here this, this is the volume integral so see that here you have at the beginning then the water going out in the top so see that you can check your physics and then well here there is no more interaction but you can see that kind of is not conserving now it's going down a little bit but this is just due to the numerics now it's a quartz mesh so you're going to lose this is numerical diffusion okay numerical methods they produce certain amount of garbage you know, that you need to live with that and that is the garbage that we have here is numerical diffusion that you see there so as you use finer meshes that it's going to disappear okay or it's less the what, what is disappearing in your domain okay and just to to show no just so to be sure look at the mesh it's, it's a very quartz mesh for the for the physics that we're dealing with th this is super quartz okay so one of these cells just can account for a very large volume okay so as you make it finer you, you are going to conserve better the, the properties okay and let me hide and let it go let's see it run eight seconds okay and there you go nice uh also just to finish down here to show you something else is you want to save no snapshots no for your presentations or whatever or movies you have to auction so a single picture is here save a screenshot okay so give it a name you have the format there different formats so i like to use png i don't know why it's my personal choice so i use png okay it's better than jpeg honestly and you have here your your, your image you can change your your resolution and so on so you want the animation also you have the auction here so you have save animation and here you have different formats so you have this ogg format ogv format which i don't know for what it stands for what you have here octira video and you can open this one using vlc player but if you are doing like powerpoint presentation and stuff like that i think it's not compatible it will give you problems so what i like to do is to use uh animated gif so what i do is you here you go and select for instance png you give it a base name no i would call it anyone you select your resolution and when you press ok for each of these tiny steps it's going to save a png file 
and then you just need to put put together join together this png and you do that movie so to do that there are many applications okay to to to, to do that but okay let me stop here okay well uh, bam 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 so let me kill it here so you have all these png so there are many applications but in, in linux there is one called convert very important also this one is part of a package okay let me show you okay you need to install this one because most of the time it's not in, it doesn't come with your linux installation so i will show you in my case here in OpenSUSE the software management node and i always forget the 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 name the complete name okay so if i will record it's this one image magic or magic is this one that you need to install okay that one image magic magic whatever so convert is part of that package so what you do is convert by the way convert takes many options okay so you can you go man convert and then you have the options okay or also convert minus help okay will work but what you do is convert and you say the base name of the file is this one any one and then you have see that you have a number zero one zero two two whatever you put a white card and you say that now i want to call it gif dot gif animated gif but just to avoid confusion i will call it banana gif but it's important that you need to give this extension so the program will know automatically that it will concatenate all these files into a single animated gif remember that it takes many options okay you can change you see that here you have many options there the timing all between slice or different snatches so it's up to you now read there the the options but here is putting together everything into this file so depending of the resolution of those png so if you are saving something with very large resolution it can take a long time and the final file also can be a heavy one the advantage is that it is kind of universal so whatever you go you will be able to to play that file so see that now we here it's giving an error because this final is not okay so if i press there see that now you have your animated gif so that is how i proceed okay that is my way okay but there are different ways to do it but i think this is very efficient this way Okay, and at least so see that these files tend to be large so you see that it's six max for such a small okay but it can be very large okay so this is how we do so let me erase all the png so see that i'm using linux commands and wildcards so erase everything there and then, and voila that's all okay so finally okay we we, we address this tutorial to show you also that there are many sec fields takes ma many options so on in any just to show you, any dictionary that you have there is you misspell something now uh, will give you the options now the the banana method uh, like i call it so see that uh put here i like to put banana as i say it doesn't exist so if i go there the compose part see that is telling me that okay uh, let me erase this okay so that is telling me that that name doesn't exist these are your options available okay and as you go to sec fields here you have many options available so we initialize a box but you have there uh, uh, uh. okay it's here so uh, you have there are all these methods available so you can initialize using stls no a geometrical files and and many things so you have many options it's very powerful now to initialize and even you can use code string that later we're going to see what is that now program to to do your initialization so this is it for for this case and um, well just also to just to come back here again just there are many methods so remember you miss a spell here and i go interphone okay i don't have the mesh oh. 
See that is telling you that you have all these methods available. So this is also a source of of confusion now that there are many methods available. So remember that OpenFin is a research code. So they put out there a lot of stuff. Instead, commercial software, they give you already some best standard practices now, predefined setup. So my goal later on, on so, so on also, I'm giving you the, the default options that I use, okay? Robust actions, but each of these different methods will give you a different outcome now. So it's better to know well the theory that in details now we're going to well not in details but we're going to talk about data and chapter six okay so i think we have covered everything for this case okay so now it's up to you try to reproduce everything and if you have questions about this let me know as i said at the beginning it's a little bit complicated because it's a completely different solver okay but as you see the idea is the same okay even the, in the previous one single phase the idea is the same but you need just to identify what is your application or solver and then set up your your files okay uh finally just to mention that here you have also a 2d version of this case okay so it's much faster but it's pretty much the same okay the only difference would be that like you have the empty patches okay if you open the files here you define your empty patches also the mesh here is done using only black mesh so it's much simpler there is no but pretty much it's, it's the same stuff so feel free to play with this one as well Okay, so that's all. Thank you for your attention. Then we're going to move to the final tutorial of this model that is vortex shedding. So there, here we are many things to do. So see you next time. Bye.